I've got about half of them. we got the Weather Assistance by Leslie Musk, International Cloud Atlas, International Cloud Atlas from 87 or 55. I'm getting both of them. Here's a book, Clouds by Alistair McAdie, 1918, member of International Cloud Committee and a bunch of other stuff. Clouds do not evolve, okay? Clouds don't evolve. So, well, here we are. Condensation trails. These are contrails, it says. Three trails can be seen. They expand with time. The older trails, one and two, probably took 15 to 30 minutes before the picture was taken. They have assumed a fleecy aspect. Well, the most recent one, three, which has just been produced, merely looks like a white streak in the sky. Numerous cirrus clouds can also be seen. They may have developed out of contrails formed earlier. A weak trough associated with a low near Iceland was passing over southern England. Rather humid and warm air associated with a weak warm front at about 700 kilometers distance was invading the higher layers of troposphere from the northwest. These are called special rare clouds in 56. The first jets were just showing up then. Everything was a prop until about 1950. The Comet airline passenger jet was just getting in the air and it was disintegrating in the air because they didn't know about frequency harmonics. So, I don't know what to make out of this. Did I say 1944? So how can that be? How can that be? All right, well, we're sharing this. Next page. I don't buy it, man. It's 1945. Let me read this. The sky is crossed in every direction by contrails at different ages. As they expand progressively, they form fluffy or fibrous clouds, and it is impossible to say with certainty whether there are also clouds of natural origin in the sky. Note the pendant swellings like inverted toadstools at 1, 2, typically typical of recently formed contrails. From an anticyclone in the southwest, a strong ridge of high pressure extended over the area. In the higher layers, advection of warm and rather humid air was in progress from the north-northeast. The associated front was at about 250 kilometers west-northwest of Farnsboro. It caused only light precipitation when it passed. This is Royal Air Force, Farnsboro, North Ham Hampshire, UK, 1 January, 1945. That's the Grand Canyon. So now this is the 87 book exactly the same pictures okay look uh, I'm a conspiracy nut I like Mel Gibson this is bullshit this is bullshit all right I'm not gonna get into it here I'm posting this on YouTube I'm sure it will excite some discussion among uh, you know a handful of nuts like myself I'm not buying it I'm not buying it furthermore the date sorry the date. All right, I'm not going to get into it here. I'm posting this on YouTube. I'm sure it will excite some discussion among, uh, you know, a handful of nuts like myself. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Furthermore, the date, sorry, is the date. All right, well, this cloud book from 1918 copyright is actually a book from 1930-ish. He lists a number of cloud categorizers. And we're going to look at those. And then we're going to look at...
this cloud classification, international system of classification in 1938. There are no special cloud categories in 1938 or 1930, yet we have contrails in 1944. So there's about a hundred photographs here. And there's some photographs you can look at in here that will verify that there is no classification for a contrail or any special cloud category like a contrail. So between 38 and 46, there seem to be when a contrail shows up. This is a great book. It's from 1925. It's got a hundred or more photographs of clouds, but it's a sort of a poetry reverie of clouds. And I'll just show a couple pages and photos.